Hello, in this tutorial I'll explain how to use a few other useful area types such as climb areas, ladder areas and sticky areas. I added a new route with some areas and other interactables. First, let's take a look at how to set up a ladder area so that the player can climb to the upper level. The ladder area can only be climbed from a single side. The side is the positive Z axis. You can determine the side from selecting the area and then checking the local chord system checkbox. The positive Z axis is the blue arrow coming from the center of the area. Now let's adjust the area so that its center is roughly on one of the ladder's steps. Now let's scale the area to the size of the ladder. Try to have it as wide as the ladder and having a full end number for the vertical scale. The area's top side must be at the last step of the ladder. You can then slightly adjust the position after you see it in-game. In order for the ladder to be functional, we must place two additional trigger areas at where the player's feet should be when he climbs off the ladder or when he has reached the top. We have to copy the names of those areas and paste them into the ladder area's base tab. Another thing we can do is to set up an interact aux area on the top of the ladder so that the player can use it to climb down. An interact aux area simply extends the interaction space for an entity. I placed it around the top of the ladder. To make it work, the ladder area's name must be copied into its interact parent text field. Now we should have a fully functional ladder. Let's check it out in dev mode. We can also create vents and other crawl spaces, so let's do that. I already placed the vents in the editor, but without some areas they won't really be usable. First we need to place some climb areas to actually be able to climb into the vents. First let's move the vent out of the way so we can have a better view of the areas that were set up. Similarly to a ladder area, a climb area can only be climbed from one of its faces. The face determined by the positive Z axis or the blue coordinate arrow in the local coordinate system. The player hand animations for climbing will play at the area's center so be sure to place it accordingly. The climb area also needs another trigger area to specify where the player is supposed to be after the climbing animation is played. Let's select that area's name and paste it into the climb area's feet positions text field. Since this is a vent, we will also want to make the player crouch when the animation is completed. Now let's move the vent door back and be sure that the area is behind the door so that the player won't be able to climb through the door. Now we have to set up the other end of the vent similarly. We can also use a crawl area in the vent. The crawl area will turn a normal walking position into a crouch one and a crouched position into a prone one. This does not modify the player's collision so it is purely aesthetic. To do this you simply have to create a crawl area. Its effects will take place once the player is inside it and it requires no additional settings. Now we can test the vent in dev mode. Another useful area type is the sticky area. It is used for when the player wants to snap objects into certain positions or to try to pull them out from one. The most notable example in Soma would be cables. I set up a cable, two lamps and a wall socket. Using a sticky area we will make it so that if the player plugs the cable in, the lamps will change their state and then a nearby door will open. The first thing to set in the sticky area is the attachable body name. This can simply be the name of an entity, but if it's a cable, it's important to specify the name of the body. For this specific cable, the end of the cable has the physics body named body11. So let's copy the name of the cable entity and paste it there, and also add an underscore and the body name. We also have lots of other settings in the sticky area. Let's set pause time to 0.1 seconds first and add some sounds and effects for when we attach or detach the cable. Mm -hmm. 
We have the springy option for when we want to detach the cable. This is useful if you don't want detaching the object to be instant. If you want to be able to both attach and detach the cable, you should use this option. Let's check the springy active box and set the distance multiplier to 0.5 and the release time to 0.1. We also have callbacks for when the object is attached or detached. Let's generate and copy them into CodeLite. The parameters for these are the name of the area and the name of the body that is attached or detached. The attach function also returns a boolean value. We have no actual use for it, so we will leave it as it is. Let's add some debug messages. Now let's make it so that the lamps change their state when attaching or detaching the cable. And finally let's open or close the door. Now we can test all of this in dev mode. By using these types of areas you can give the player extra mobility and also use sticky areas for puzzles or events. Stay tuned for more HPL3 tutorials.